you're doing snow removal and you don't break something, you're probably doing it right. But we broke something, so we gotta fix it. Well, I don't think you're supposed to be able to see daylight through the axle. All right, if you're doing snow removal and you don't break something, you're probably doing it right. But we broke something, so we gotta fix it. I just picked up this bearing kit from O'Reilly's. Look there. It's just a four bolt pattern. It comes with the bearings already in it, as well as the seal. And those are greased up, so those are good to go. It's got the cap as well as the nuts. So we're gonna go put that in. They only had one of them. Uh, so we're just gonna do the side that's broken and we're gonna leave the other side for now. Um, this was $45, so not a big fix. Um, but we got about three inches of snow coming tomorrow. And so today we just finished up and shoveled the rest of the properties because it was just a dusting, just over an inch. Um, but with three inches, I don't wanna be shoveling that. So we're gonna go get that fixed. Let's go. So welcome back to the last day in the three days of snow mini series. Today is day four and we weren't planning on having a day four, but because we broke the bearing, we have to fix it. So welcome back. I appreciate you guys coming back and watching this fourth video. If you guys are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'll put the statistic right here on the screen so that you guys can see, but only 3.5% of you guys that are watching are subscribed. And we'll look at this clip real quick. This is how we ended up driving the Jacobson around for a little while before we realized the bearing was bad. Well, it was a little more than bad. It was destroyed and the bearings weren't there. Some of the races were still in the bearing assembly or the hub assembly, excuse me, but that was it. But like I said earlier, only 3.5% of you guys that are watching are subscribed. So please, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me out greatly as well as the channel and the videos themselves. So please consider doing that. Today was a cold day. As you guys saw in the last video, it was negative 38 in the last video. And today was negative 20 if my memory serves me right. This is kind of a cool shot with the heater. Like I said, it was negative 20 out today and that's why I closed the door and had the heater running. That is the new DeWalt uh, propane heater. And it can run on an extension cord, so electric, or it's battery power that can run off the DeWalt, I think it's the two amp hour or the four amp hour batteries. And we have run it off the two amp hour battery and it did do really well and I'll have a review video later on. But like I said, negative 20 degrees, that's why the camera originally frosted up there because it was so cold in the truck and on the way there and then when the heater started blowing on it, all of the um, moisture condensated and it wasn't until it got very warm when I turned up the heat that it cleared up because the entire camera was then warm. I was also recording on my old GoPro Hero 8 for this video. And so this is on the time warp right now and I didn't realize that it didn't record audio in the time warp, the new 9 does. Um, but if you take it off of the time warp and then go real speed, it doesn't record audio. Basically, I was just showing you guys what this looks like once we got the wheel off, and it wasn't good. There was zero grease on the axle. We got the nut off, and the nut barely spun on the threads because there's so much dirt and gunk in the threads, it was hard to get off. As well as there were two races left on the axle and I believe one race left in the hub assembly. And those the races are just what holds the bearings in. Those stay solid on the rim of the tire and on the axle of the tire. 
and then the bearing is the part that spins in the middle. For those of you um, that don't know that or don't know, have never taken apart a bearing before, so that there, that doesn't create a lot of friction. So as you can see, the first race came off pretty easy. So did the hub assembly, but the second bearing was pretty tough to get off. And that's just because there's no grease on it. It's plain and simple, it was pretty bad to work with. This is a phone call to O'Reilly's. All right guys, I was worried about the bearings being the right diameter to fit on the axle and they were the right diameter which is good um, so I know what size they are now because the actual bearings are gone from the original all I have is the part that sits on the axle left that holds the bearing um, but unfortunately the hub kit with the hub that came in it is just slightly too long so it went over the end of the axle and all the threads. So if I was able to get the axle nut on, even a couple of threads, the cotter pin wouldn't have been able to then put in, um, which is a no-go. So I have to return this kit, and then I'm on my way back to O'Reilly's right now, and they said they have just the bearing kit in stock, so I'm gonna go get a bearing kit. And I might pick up two and do the other side as well at the same time just because of the state when I took this other one apart, seeing all the dirt in there and seeing no grease was the main thing. Um, it might be wise to do the other one at the same time since I have the entire back end up right now. So we're gonna go exchange those parts and I'll talk to you guys later. Again guys, GoPro does such a good job with the color and the skies and bright daylight. Very good job. So I just got to O'Reilly's and picked up the bearing set instead of the hub set and I got back out with the truck to put them in the old hub to test fit them and he gave me the outer bearings which well, I don't have an outer and inner I just have one bearing so I ended up getting the inner bearings instead because those didn't fit um, and those just look like the ones that were in the hub kit except without grease obviously and with a one inch inner diameter and then i also got the seal to go on the outside so they only had one set of those and there's other stores in town that have more so i might go to another store to pick up the a set for the other side since this side was so bad so a little bit of running around to do today um but we're gonna get this wheel on we're gonna get it straight and we're gonna get it spinning again with some grease so let's go I was happy to finally get all the parts I needed. I had to go to two different stores after returning the hub kit uh, because I needed two bearings and one seal for each side. So six in total and each O'Reilly's that I ended up going to only had one. But to further explain what I was talking about earlier, we'll take the drink that I'm going to review later as the axle of the Jacobson. And so the old hub assembly stopped right about here. And so this was all covered in grease and the axle nut went right here. And so once the nut was on, you put a cotter pin through and then you put the cap on. And with the new hub assembly that I got for like 45 bucks, the hub assembly went all the way to the end pretty much. And so there's only a little bit of area left. And so you could put the nut on, but then you wouldn't be able to put that cotter pin through because the the shaft of the hub assembly came all the way over the top of it, or over the end of it. And so why that is a no-go is because if that cotter pin can't go through that axle nut, it won't hold the nut on. That pin holds the nut from spinning off because it's not a lock nut or anything like that. So what you end up doing is tightening that nut down till the axle almost doesn't spin and then backing it off like a quarter turn or a half turn depending on what the threads are and then you put that cotter pin in there to keep it exactly in that spot. So because that didn't work, we had to get our own bearings and seals and redo them. 
which kind of sucked because <laughs> as everything does because you'll see coming up in this video we could not get the races out of the hubs um, this is my dad helping me now at the storage unit and we tried doing it there just pounding it out with a screwdriver and a hammer and they just would not come out there you use a press to put bearings in and we also did not have a press so it was very hard to get the new ones in and that's why I wanted to just get the it's meant for actually a trailer um, a single axle like small tractor supply trailer it's just a simple four bolt pattern and then they're just made as a universal kit here you can see what I'm talking about. We ended up shattering the old races, trying to get them out. And those are metal, so shattering metal is not an easy thing to do. There, on the one side where there was no grease, the original side that was destroyed, there were a lot of metal shavings and burrs on the inside of the hub. And so to prevent metal shavings from getting in the new bearings and ruining those, we used a wire wheel and cleaned those out. And the other side did have plenty of grease and the grease didn't look too bad, but since we were there anyways, we figured we might as well do it. Unfortunately, it was negative 20 when we decided to do it. And here are the new races that need to go in. These didn't go in well either. I actually ended up putting the races in the freezer for a little bit and then heating up the hub assembly with a torch. And so heating the hub assembly up with a torch will expand it and then freezing the races will shrink them and so it drops in a little bit easier. But we still had to use a piece of wood to try and get them in straight. And we ended up getting them in. This is my dad packing the bearings with grease. You wanna get grease in between each of the rollers as well as around all the edges. And guys, this video is almost over so we're gonna squeeze in the drink review right here. This is the, of course, another bubbler. And this is the Cranberry Grapefruit Sparkler flavor. So let's try this out. Wow. If you guys like grapefruit, you're going to like this. This is like cracking open a grapefruit and just drinking straight from it. But it's not as bitter. It's more sweet. I actually like that flavor a lot. The grapefruit is a sour tart flavor and the cranberry has a more bitter pronounced flavor to it. But because they're sweetened with erythritol, as I said erythritol in the last video, um, and stevia extract, they're very sweet. Not overly sweet like pop, it's not like syrup, um, but it's nice, it's not sour. As you can see here, well the cobalt, of course, love that tool. But the new bearing caps that we put in are greasable, so they have grease zerks on them. I would much rather have those than sealed, because you can just keep applying new grease to them. I don't know why things don't have those from the factory. They wouldn't be that much more, I don't think. Um, so we put those in, and it was a little bit of a pain uh, trying to put all this stuff in guys of course negative 20 didn't help the heater is very warm but as soon as the heat comes out it rises up and this storage unit is I want to say about 22 feet tall at the top and then it slopes down at the back to about 18 feet so it's a very tall ceiling in the storage unit and it's open at the top that shares with all the other units so of course the heat's just gonna leave and there's no insulation we also took the tie rod off on the back here to get the wheels straighter because they were towed in a little bit. And we also took off one of the bearings to tighten up the steering a little bit. We tightened up that nut, put the cotter pin back in. A little bit of a tip for you guys, if you guys are ever working on cold concrete like in your garages, putting a thin piece of insulation down helps out a lot. Even if you're wearing winter boots like I am in this video, just stepping on concrete draws all the heat from your feet and it leaves your body. So a thin piece of insulation can go a long ways and it's super cheap. And it's portable, you can move it wherever you need it.
There I'm trying to get the heater exactly where I want it because if it's too close, you start sweating right away. If it's a little bit too far away, just a few inches, it's not warming you up. And guys, that's our video for today. I know this was a little bit of a shorter video. Hopefully it didn't feel like it was too long. I wanted to explain to you guys what we were doing and show you guys that not every day is a fun day. Um, some days we get to move snow, some days we get to spray liquid de-icer, but some days we have to work on equipment too. And so there are ups and downs, of course, in every business. And I want to show you guys both of those so that you get a real understanding of what we do behind the scenes and not everything is um, as good as it looks in the videos. And so because of that, if you guys are still here at the end of this video so that I know who the true patrons of this channel are, type in the comment you see right here, which is working overtime. And why are we going to say working overtime in the comments? Well, because when things break, you have to go fix them and you don't get paid for them. So it's like working overtime, except instead of getting pay and a half, like most people do, you don't get any pay. And in fact, you usually have to pay for more parts to fix it. But that's okay. That's what running a business is. Of course, the business is still running up and good even through this dry winter, and I'm grateful for that. So if you guys enjoyed watching this video, like I said earlier, only 3.5% of you guys are subscribed. So I'd like to see that number go up. And if we could do that, that'd be great. So if you guys like this video and enjoy the content, please give this video a thumbs up. If you could give it two thumbs up, that'd be great, but I know you can't. Consider subscribing down below, and if you do, turn that bell notification on right next to it so that you guys are notified every time one of my new videos comes out. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.